Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I want to talk about five builds that you can try in this current patch. These are heroes or builds that I've either seen in my pubs, pros going, and you should use them in your pubs because they're honestly very, very powerful. Every single one of these builds might even catch your opponent off guard. Some of them are meta, some of them are not, and let's get into it. And now I want to tell you guys a little bit about Dota Plus from Overwolf. This is a free stats app you guys can download right now that's going to show you your stats for the last three months. So if you want to know your games played, your MMR, your win rate, your XPM, your GPM, all of these things you need to track to know how well you're doing and what you need to change to gain MMR, you can get for absolutely free. On top of that, the biggest reason why you need to download Dota Plus, at least for me, is the ban suggestions. Basically, it tells you what the enemy team is good at. It tells you their best heroes, what they've been winning with. You just ban it. You might be wondering why your good heroes, why your best heroes keep getting banned. It's because of Dota Plus. The enemy team is using it and banning out your best heroes. So go download Dota Plus right now and I'll see you guys there. All right, so the first one is something that I recently saw PSG LGD do and it was brought to my attention by a friend of mine and this is Blightstone Warlock with Tiny. This is a pretty cool combo for a couple of reasons. Now, generally I am gonna be talking about uh, the heroes you can play and I actually will go over a very cool right-click Tiny item build that you guys probably haven't seen yet that's actually becoming meta within this combo. Most of these uh, heroes, the five heroes I'm gonna be covering are individual except for this one, but let's get into it. So the first thing is this Tiny Warlock Warlock lane that PSG LGD ran and what was cool about it is they bought a Blightstone on the Warlock They then took Fatal Bonds on the Warlock They then took the Tree Grab on the Tiny and what they did was they bonded the two enemy heroes to the Creep Wave And if you kill the Creep Wave with the Tree Grab when they're Fatal Bonded Which you amp with the Blightstone on Warlock so you should be hitting the Creep Wave with the Warlock The enemies will actually take about 230 damage from it total, which is really, really cool. And on top of that, this is a great combo in general. Not only is it just good in the lane for this somewhat cheesy strategy, even though it's actually legit, Tiny is also a hero that lacks sustain in lane. Warlock obviously provides that. In fact, he's one of the best heroes, if not the best hero in the game, at providing that in the lane outside of maybe Io. And in team fights, Tiny is a hero that does a lot of AoE damage. This is incredible with Fatal Bonds. Another cool thing is Warlock's level 15 talent, which is Upheaval Grant's attack speed. Basically, when you channel your Upheaval, the longer it's on the ground for, the more attack speed it actually gives, up to 70 attack speed. And Tiny's a hero that kind of just stands still, you know? In a team fight, he's not gonna just bounce from target to target. I mean, he can do that with certain builds like Blink Silver Edge, but in a lot of games, even with that build, he's going to blink in and then just man up. And so essentially, he's going to stay in this upheaval for a very long period of time, and that's pretty cool. Now, finally, the tiny build that you guys can try right now that's becoming very, very popular in high-level games is actually Moonshard Rush. This is something that I was a little bit skeptical on. The reason why I'm skeptical on it is Shadowblade is about a thousand gold cheaper than Moonshard. Shadowblade gives 35 attack speed, which is nothing to scoff at. However, for exactly a thousand gold more, yeah, you don't get the damage from Shadowblade, but Tiny doesn't really need damage. You don't get the mobility from Shadowblade, which is definitely the biggest problem here. However, for once again, a only a thousand more gold, you get to buy a Moonshard. And Moonshard grants 140 attack speed. That is obviously pretty insane, right? That's, what is it? Oh, it's actually exactly four times the amount of attack speed of a Shadow Blade. In fact, people don't go Echo Saber on this build. So it's actually cheaper than going Shadow Blade Echo Saber. In fact, it's the same cost, right? Moon Shard plus Shard plus the Aghanim Shard is actually the same cost as Echo Saber Shadow Blade. Now, there are some downsides to this build. You lack mana regen, you lack mobility. However, you're actually much better at farming than Shadow Blade Echo Saber, which is pretty freaking cool because in pubs, <laughs> that's what you guys are gonna do. You know, you're gonna pick Tiny, especially with like a Warlog, and you're just gonna farm, you know? So for the same cost of Shadow Blade Echo Saber, you get the Shard Moon Shard and you wipe through camps. It's pretty freaking cool. All right, coming in at number two, Enchantress is a hero that's very popular right now, but if you haven't played it yet, I highly recommend you do. Taking over the troll summon creep is the stupidest thing in Dota right now. Besides harpy creeps, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that's still in the game, man. My friend in a pub that I was playing with him flew the harpy. Like we were in the enemy team's base. And you know how in the base there's like tree lines on the side, right? You can fly it like 
off the map in that area, and it just gives vision of their base. It's the stupidest thing in the game. And yeah, Enchantress can do that. She can take over the Harpy Scout. She can also take over the Troll Creed, but the main build you want to try here is the Hurricane Pike build. If you haven't given a shot right now, honestly, in my opinion, this is one of the best pub builds in the game. And the reason why is you have to do two things to win his edge. And here's the first one. Number one is win the lane. All right. <laughs> yeah, if you don't win the lane as Zench, you're probably doing something wrong. The second one is buying a Hurricane Pike. Honestly, this is the perfect item for Zench. It gives you HP so you don't get bursted, and then you just do a ton of damage without, you know, much gold. Right? Pike is cheap. Dragonlance is cheap. Four Staff is cheap. Every component is good for Zench. It's like, it, it, it honestly feels incredible. I, I don't think there's like a more meta support in my eyes right now, besides maybe IO Death Prophet or potentially Pango. But yeah, this hero is nuts right now. Coming in at number three is Spirit Vessel Coddle, position four. Now, I'm sure you've seen a lot of mid coddle as of late. Uh, this hero is still popular as a support, but honestly, every time I see this build on coddle, this Vessel uh, Coddle build, it honestly looks incredible. It looks incredible because of a couple reasons. Number one, the cast range is insane on Vessel as is, right? I'm sure you guys know this. When you have a Spirit Vessel on any hero, the cast range is nuts. Now, on top of that, Coddle's ultimate gives him increased cast range. Yes, this works on items. And basically what you need to understand here is let's say you're playing against any sort of initiator. With Vessel on Coddle, you easily can cancel their blink from like outside of blink range. It's hilarious, right? It's insane. And on top of that, this item just kind of works for Coddle. It gives you a really good item in the laning stage where if you get kills, you can then get even more kills. It gives you mana regen and some stats, right? Some armor, some stats, which is incredible. You might be like, why mana regen? Why would you want that? Sometimes you're going to be using chakra magic on your offlaner and not yourself or your carry and not yourself. And so it's actually pretty nice to have the mana regen. But then when you get the vessel, your hero is actually relatively tanky and you can kind of solo kill certain heroes. If you have two Vessel Charges, it gives you the needed DPS to basically get through the HP pools of heroes that you usually would do nothing to. For instance, Coddle against Tiny. Your value against Tiny generally is just to lower his magical resistance and then give him a mischance. You're not going to do any damage to him, even if you go a Dagon build, which is like kind of common. You don't really do any damage to him, any significant damage. That's just not the case with Vessel. And I honestly think Vessel is somewhat of a busted item in Dota. I'm not going to lie. In the right game, it's like the best item in the game. I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not even just saying that. Like, Vessel is a top tier Dota item and it works so well on Caudal. Also, if I'm not mistaken, it does uh, get amped by his Solar Bind, which is pretty cool as well. All right, next up, coming in at number four, this is one that's definitely very meta, but it is something I still wanted to talk about, and it's Diffusal Pango. Pango came back into the meta recently for a couple of reasons. Swashbuckle damage was buffed. Uh, the lucky shot was actually buffed in terms of how it works with the armor reduction. And on top of that, the defusal was buffed for heroes like Pango. What I mean by that, defusal is better now on Slark, Ursa, and Pango. Why? Because it was nerfed for illusion heroes, for illusions, but it was buffed because you still get the active, right? You still get the slow. The mana burn for like the hero is, is I believe it's the same if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken. So basically, it got mega buffed for any hero that doesn't have illusions that bought Diffusal Blade. And this works so well on Pango because basically on Pango, you can swashbuckle from max range. This is, I think it burns 200 mana total, 160 if you don't swash through them. And it just screws people. Like, it's insane. Anytime I play against Pango now, it makes me want to rip my hair out because even if I'm in the laning stage, right? Pango can get his Diffusal at minute 11, minute 12. Like, I'll be split pushing as, like, Sand King. He'll just walk up, swashbuckle me, not even try to kill me, and my mana pool is just gone. I, I have to stop farming. And this is the case, like, if you're trying to push high ground into Pango or push a tower into Pango, you're just going to have no mana. Like, you're going to lose the fight through resource management, like a lack of mana. And, and so, yeah, that's insane. Another thing as well is when you're rolling on people, you can't miss because you defuse them. So it guarantees the setup on the roll. On top of that, another cool combo or another issue with Pango to some extent is if you went blink first, you lack damage. If you didn't go blink first and you tried to go on somebody and let's say you swashed up to them, if you swash up to them, what would happen is you would roll and then they would be a little bit far away and you might lose your chance to actually get on top of them or chain stun them in a convenient area. You could argue that you can shield crash, but the slow isn't that insane. 
The fuse will allows you to swash on top of them, defuse them, and then roll on them and keep them very, very close to you and most importantly to your team when you're chain stunning them. And finally, last but not least, is Broodmother. Now, I know, I know what you're thinking. I just random this hero. I'm not even kidding. I just random this hero twice and unranked. It felt good, like both games. The hero felt good. And let me talk about why. So number one, the hero is still a pretty good laner once you get your levels up and running. Now you're not insane at level one, but you're not horrible. You still have three HP regen bonus from the web. So you're fine, right? You can sustain the lane. Then at level two, you get your insatiable hunger. For eight seconds, you get 40% lifesteal, which heals you to full. So you have like infinite sustain essentially. And you're still brute. Like what I've realized is I don't even remember exactly what they nerfed about the hero. Basically, the main thing you need to know is that when you take a certain amount of damage as brute now, like let's say you drop to a low amount of HP, it lowers your movement speed. So basically brute has to play around boots now, but that's fine because treads are incredible because current brood actually largely plays around right clicking. That's how you play the current brood. The most common item build is corrosion, tread, soul ring, uh, or soul ring earlier. But right, you go corrosion, let's say corrosion, soul ring, treads or treads components, soul ring into an orchid for more matter regen and solo kill potential, and then into a BKB. After the BKB, you buy your shard. After the shard, you buy AC. It's one of those things where it's like, you're a right clicker, so the treads is great, right? It makes a lot of sense on this hero. The attack speed and damage is fantastic. And I don't know, I was just playing the game and I'm like, if you pick Brood in a good Brood game, this is a hero that's just gonna dominate pubs. People don't know how to respond to it. Now you gotta learn how to play the hero, but it's not that hard. I really don't believe Brood is that hard. I think understanding like, how to micro the spiders is a little difficult, but it's not as bad as other micro heroes. Definitely not like some sort of Chen, right? And then in certain matchups, you just dominate. I think the biggest one for me in the current meta that I would consider picking Brood into is Medusa. Now Medusa can make the early levels a little bit difficult, but I don't think Medusa makes it hard enough for Brood can't lane, because once again, you have region at level one with your webs, and then at level two, you have the insatiable hunger. So I don't think Medusa is gonna be able to kick you out of lane, and then at level three, you have Silk and Bola and an Oove, and you just run down the Medusa. I'm not kidding. If you turn on the Sociable Hunger and then you Silk and Bola the Medusa, she loses the trade because Silk and Bola, your third ability, slows, makes every uh, one of your units, and you do extra magical damage, which is how the spiders do damage, and it makes them miss by 40%. So the Medusa cannot man up at all. And then on top of that, Medusa has no ways to deal with snakes. Like split shot is absolutely not good enough. Snake is not good enough. And yeah, you just dominate her. You're gonna force out a stone gaze every single fight. Um, the Silken Bowl is shard, if you don't know what it does. Brood shard makes it an AOE. It's a massive AOE. And on top of that, it turns the mischance to an 80% mischance. That's crazy, 80%. And so basically for six seconds, the Medusa misses 80% of the time. That's 50% uptime, considering the cooldown is only 12 seconds. So I really do believe that Brood is just not being explored by uh, players and pros because it fell out of the meta. It got nerfed and it got nerfed pretty hard. But the thing is, I believe this is a really, really, really good sleeper pick right now. So I, I really wanted to put it in the video. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you have some builds to go over now. If you have any builds that you've been dominating with, for instance, another one I thought about putting on this list, but I didn't, was actually Pudge Hard Carry. How uh, Flesh Heap works right now is really cool. The active on Flesh Heap makes you take very little limited damage. I played against the Pudge safe lane recently. It actually was very hard to land against. I'm not kidding. I was struggling, right? The hero uh, takes like no damage and the Flesh Heap allows him to use Rot offensively, something you basically could not do uh, in the early game without killing yourself. That's not the case anymore because your fleshy back active blocks your rot damage. But alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.